Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the next series, the next webinar in our series from the Laser and Skin Surgery Center of New York. Today, we are very honored and lucky to be here with Dr. Cindy Bay, and she is going to be speaking about leg and facial veins, as well as different types of vascular issues, which basically in layman terms, that means um, redness or veins that you can see under the skin. So I see a lot of you joining right now. Thank you for joining. I'll give you a minute or two to get situated. While you're doing that, for those of you that are here, um, oh, Dr. Cran says hi, Dr. Bay. Um, while you guys are waiting, we are going to, at the bottom of your screen, you should have an option for chat and an option for Q&A. Q&A is uh, the best place to start inputting your questions that you would like Dr. Bay to answer. You can do so now if you already know what they are. You can do it as she's speaking in her presentation and questions come up, or you can do it at the end when we get to the Q&A portion. So, all right, I think most of you have joined right now. So welcome again to our, the latest edition of our webinar series with Dr. Cindy Bay. We are speaking, she is speaking today about leg and facial veins and different vascular issues. Dr. Bay is a board certified dermatologist. She has over a decade of experience. She's fellowship trained. She actually did her fellowship at the Laser Skin Surgery Center with Dr. Geronimus. She is an expert on all types of dermatology. So that means everything from cosmetic dermatology. Of course, today she's speaking about um, veins, but she also does a lot of injectables, a lot of lasers, a lot of body sculpting, all types of cosmetic procedures. And she also does a lot of skin cancer treatments, including Mohs surgery. That's what she's fellowship trained in. Um, Let's see, she also is a national trainer for Allergan, which means she's actually one of the people that teaches other doctors how to do injections like Botox and Juvederm. She's a mom of two young babies, one is six months and one is two years. So she's very busy. And she also has over 40 scientific publications and she's still very much involved in research. So she knows a lot of what's kind of going in the cutting edge. And last but not least, she teaches cosmetic dermatology to all of the dermatology residents at NYU Medical Center. So with that in mind, I'm very happy to formally introduce Dr. Cindy Bay. Thanks so much, Risa. Okay, just as Risa mentioned, I'll be reviewing leg and facial veins as well as unwanted vasculature. So in summary, I'll review types of leg veins patients present with, the various treatment options, results to expect. I'll also review facial vessels as well as unwanted vasculature, the different treatment options available and results to expect. This is a picture of my leg vein team and we're performing endovenous laser therapy, which I'll review shortly. Leg veins are categorized based on their size. You can see here on the very left, these are called spider veins because they're very small and look like little spiders. As they get bigger, you can see that there are these blue colored veins that we call reticular veins. And as they start sticking out of the skin, we describe those as varicose veins. Varicose veins are very common in over 30% of adults. Reticular and spider veins can be seen in 80% of men and 85% in women. And the incidence increases with each decade of life. And if you look at this drawing, we're gonna be focusing on the superficial venous system, which is this darker blue venous system. And this is called the great saphenous vein. And we're also going to discuss the small saphenous vein here on the back of your leg. So let's go over causes and risks. Genetics is always an issue. If your parents had leg veins, you'll probably also have leg veins. But occupation is a risk factor as well. Many people in the healthcare industry are constantly on their feet. So many people actually wear compression stockings to help with their symptoms and to help avoid or prevent getting varicose veins. Pregnancy can also cause it because the increase in volume can stretch the vein. And once you give birth, the vessels are um, smaller because all the volume is lost from the baby. And so the valves may no longer touch. So I'm gonna show you a video of what normal venous flow looks like. Here you go. Um, and you can see here, you, the blood is flowing towards the heart in one direction, and it's not dribbling back down because these valves are closed. Now, if you look at someone with venous insufficiency, that's the medical term, you can see these valves are no longer touching. And so the blood that should be going towards the heart is dribbling back down and causing these varicosities. 
And like here on this list, there are many different causes and risks to developing varicose veins. So now what? If you have unsightly veins or varicose veins, what should you do? Come in for a consultation. We'll perform a physical exam and review your symptoms. Common symptoms related to leg veins include aching, swelling, cramping, restless legs. There's actually many. And the interesting thing I've noticed with my patients is that a lot of them get accustomed to these symptoms where they realize I don't have any until we treat them. So common examples, a lot of women who can't fit into their knee high boots, after we treat, they say, oh my gosh, I fit in my boots now. Or um, patients, they say, oh, my legs feel so good. I feel so energized because they forget that they had all of this aching and pain related to their leg veins. So after the consultation, we book a duplex ultrasound, and this is where we map your veins. And if you look at this worksheet, we map your leg veins here, the great softness vein. We measure the size and the duration of reflex all along the leg. And the same thing on the back of the leg where we have the small saphenous vein. And depending on your insurance, um, if certain criteria are met, we can bill this to your insurance and have treatment covered as well. So what is the treatment? It really depends on the severity of the disease. So we have endovenous laser therapy, which is an outpatient procedure using local anesthesia. It's a laser energy that we use to seal the disease vein closed. And it's superior to surgery because there's overall less pain and downtime and better success rates. And then we have ultrasound guided sclerotherapy where we have the ultrasound help me find the vessel underneath the skin to treat it effectively. And then we have sclerotherapy, which can be medical or cosmetic, and it's just the targeted elimination of veins. And if you look at this picture, this is an ultrasound picture here, and this bigger circle is the vein that we're treating, and this bright light is the laser that we've cannulated into the vein. So let's review endovenous laser therapy. I always counsel my patients who are about to come in for treatment that they'll be walking into a blue room just so they're not intimidated. So it looks like you're stepping into an operating room because even though it's a minimally invasive procedure, we still want to do it under sterile conditions. So the first thing we do is we mark the vein that we're going to treat, as you can see here, and then the skin is prepped and draped. And then I use local anesthesia to minimize any discomfort. And then I uh, cannulate the laser fiber into the vein. You can see this white mark here. This is the laser fiber that I've uh, created an IV for. And so the laser is fired and then the patient is bandaged and ready to go. This is a video showing what's happening. You can see this laser fiber is put into the disease vein and as we pull it out, the vessel is sealed shut. So for post-op and follow-up, we have our patients ambulate immediately after. There's absolutely no downtime. We ask our patients to wear compression stockings daily, avoid hot baths, jogging, heavy lifting, and no air travel for about two weeks. We recommend over-the-counter medicine for any discomfort, and patients follow up four weeks after their procedure to follow up and possibly treat with ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy. And if we do treat with ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy, patients are treated at every, um, every four-week intervals. So here are some results to expect. This is a patient here with varicose veins on her anterior leg. And you know it's the same patient because she has these brown marks or flat seborrheic keratosis on her legs. And you can see we've essentially eliminated them. Here are some more results. This is the inner thigh of another patient. And again, completely disappeared with treatment. Here's some more varicose veins that we treated at our center. And these are varicose veins actually on the ankle of one of my patients. And let me show you um, what treatment entails. It's just a small little injection into the vein. And you can see if you follow the vein, you can see the medicine go up. And I'll do it again up here just so that you can follow. And these are the results to expect. And while this video is playing, I have to thank my patients for giving me permission to share their photos just so that I can educate everybody else. So if any of my patients are watching, thanks so much, especially if you recognize yourself. <sighs> okay, so here's the last injection here. And if you focus here, you can see this vein is being treated with this medicine. Okay, so moving on, I'd like to show what ultrasound guided sclerotherapy entails. This is a, a picture of the ultrasound and this white 
mark here is the needle. This is me injecting, finding the vessel, and then injecting the medicine, and you can see it's going through all of the veins. It's essentially a painless procedure. These are results to expect when we treat reticular veins. You can see here are the before and here are the afters. And you can see here, this patient had a little one here that she disliked that we treated. And then another one here, let me just move this little guy. And you can see here, the disappearance of these reticular veins. And I added some more videos of sclerotherapy. If you focus here, this is the reticular vein that we're targeting. You can see that it's disappearing with the medicine. And this is sclerotherapy of spider veins, again, being treated with this medicine. These are some results to expect. This patient had a lot of spider veins and we treated her multiple times and she got a great result. A common question I get is how many treatments will I need? It depends. Many times, if you're a candidate for endovenous laser therapy, it's usually one time because there's such a high success rate. Ultrasound guided sclerotherapy require a few, but again, it depends on the patient. If, it's, um, if you have severe disease, you may need multiple. And with sclerotherapy, multiple treatments are needed. I recommend four to six, but sometimes you need a few less or a few more. And just to summarize, I'd like to play this segment of uh, the Today Show that I was able to uh, describe treatment of varicose veins. Of all women in this country, they're unsightly veins that make you feel self, un, you know, self-conscious when you're wearing a swimsuit or skirt, even shorts. Yeah, so we're going to help you get a leg up on that. Make sure those pesky veins disappear with the help of board-certified dermatologist, Dr. Dr. Cindy Bay. Bay. So Hello, nice to see Dr. Bay. Nice to see you too. You? Good. How are you? So people have spider veins and people have varicose veins. What would you say is the difference just between those two? That's such a good question. So the difference is really about the size. Yeah. Spider veins are really small, about a millimeter in size sort of like a grain of salt, right. whereas varicose veins, they're much bigger. They're like marbles if you want to compare. Oh, and they can be painful they too, They can be right? painful. Your legs can be swollen yeah. and achy, whereas spider veins are mostly a cosmetic problem. All right, so if you were going to describe some, that's genetic a lot of times, right? There varicose is a genetic veins. predisposition. So we actually have a way we can explain to people what the difference is between a normal vein and a varicose vein. Yes, so the best way to understand why we develop varicose veins is to think about the valves in our veins. Mm -hmm. So these valves are there to make sure blood goes back to your heart and it doesn't dribble back down. So why don't one of you guys grab one of the normal veins and okay. try putting blood into um, putting these the veins. Putting in here? Right, so okay. you can so see it doesn't rocket. dribble down, right. right? Because the valves in this one yeah. are functioning properly. Right. So here, Kathy, grab this one. Oh, this good. is a varicose vein. So when you put blood into this vein, that you can right see down. it goes okay. right yeah. down because the valve is not working. Yeah. Right, feel that. This is yeah. what a varicose vein is like. Ooh. They're stretched, they're tortuous, they're distorted. Yeah, they're uncomfortable. Right, yeah. so this is what a varicose okay. vein is. But they've no things I can do now, right? Absolutely. Right. First, okay. let's talk home remedies, because sometimes you think, I've got stuff in my house. Let's see if any of these home remedies work. So right. what do yeah. we have? Absolutely. So have you guys heard of cypress oil? Cypress oil? No. Yeah, I haven't either, but some people have asked me about it. Okay. So let me ask you. Does it work or not work for varicose veins? Cypress oil? You know why I say it doesn't? Because we've never heard of it before and yes. everybody tells us everything. That's yes. very logical, <laughs> yes. So it actually doesn't work. Okay. We just went over that varicose veins is a problem with the valves inside the veins. Oh. So a topical treatment won't affect the underlying cause, okay. right? What about like a compression sock, something that squeezes like it? Like puts you in after surgery. Yeah. Right. What do you guys think? Do you think it works or not work? It would I seem would like know. likely, if there was something that would work, I would think that might help. Right, so it's actually a good prevention, but it's not a treatment by ah. itself. Oh, okay. So people who have jobs where they're, you know, standing for long periods of time. Yeah, and I, let me guess, traveling. is apple cider vinegar a no-go? You guys know now, right? Oh, yeah. no-go. Yeah. And it's it so good for so many other things, well, let's, so. let's show the right way what, to get rid of work. All right, let's so the right way to get so rid of cool. Are you guys ready to finally yeah. see what works? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's talk about spider Oh, Oh, is that amazing? Wow. So this is a procedure where we put a medicine into what the is spider the medicine? vein. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of different types oh, okay. we can use. But look at it, look at it. Is it causes oh, the vein to get what? sticky? It just disappears. It it's Absolutely. like an eraser. Oh, yeah. bye, goodbye. It's painful. Do you get numbed beforehand? No, it's not painful. Okay. It's just a little pinch. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. All right, oh. will you show us varicose veins, what works? Absolutely. So there's a procedure called EVLT. It yeah. stands for endovenous laser Therapy. And this is my patient, Mary. You see she's awake. Yeah. She's, she's with us, and we're numbing her up for the procedure because it's essentially painless. 
So, so why are you numbing her up? If it's numbing painless. her up so that she doesn't feel any Oh, and yeah. painless after right. you're numb. Gotcha. Right. But this is in comparison to the older treatments like vein stripping, which were very painful with downtime yes. and needed general anesthesia. Yeah. This is, it, wow. it stands for endovenous laser therapy, where we use a laser to heat the inside of the vein, seal it shut. So there's and no downtime. Dr. Bay. Back. Whoa. You're right. news for everybody. All right. right. Okay. So let's go back to our presentation. In uncertain times, the full cost of a new roof can be overwhelming. So act now to get a new roof through. Let me just stop that. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Sorry about that. That's okay. While you bring back up your presentation, um, everyone, thank you for submitting questions. If anyone else, I, I know a lot of you have signed on after I got done with my little spiel. So feel free in the bottom, there's a little Q&A. You can pop in some questions right there if anyone has any. Um, and I will also post the link to the video that Dr. Bay just sent, um, just in case you wanted to watch it again. I'll put that in the chat box. So Dr. Bay, you just want to share your screen again. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that. Share. That's okay. Um, So now okay. let's talk about facial veins and unwanted vasculature. So this is a laundry list, but I'll be reviewing periorbital veins, telangiectasias, otherwise known as broken blood vessels, erythema, otherwise known as redness that we can see in rosacea, post-inflammatory erythema, and other dermatoses, stretch marks, venous lakes, scars, bruising, post-procedure, as well as port wine stains. So this is one of my patients who hated this vein around his eye. And so we treated him using the NDAG laser and was able to get rid of it with one treatment. And just to let everyone know, um, safety is paramount when we treat these patients. And so we inserted a metal eye shield to protect his globe before treatment. These are pictures of telangiectasias. This is actually a borrowed picture from Dr. Geronimus. He had a great before and after. This is a very common um, condition we treat in our patients. And you can see this in rosacea or just in general, people can have them on their face. This patient has a type of rosacea. There's multiple types. The type she has is called erythematotelangiectatic type, which just means redness. There are topical treatments available, um, but they work temporarily. So some of the ones that are available, they constrict the blood vessel temporarily so that the blood vessel doesn't show as much redness because it's constricted. But once the medicine wears off, the redness recurs. And some people complain about rebound redness that they feel can be worse than what they started with. So I always recommend laser treatment. This patient had three monthly treatments using pulse dye laser, and you can see the improvement with just lasers. This patient had rosacea that really affected the tip of her nose that made her self-conscious. And we also treated her with pulse dye laser. And we treated her once, and she was happy with the results with just one treatment, so we stopped there. I'd like to also review a term called post-inflammatory erythema, PIE. Uh, my colleague and I, we actually published an article about this because we wanted to introduce new terminology into the dermatology literature to describe this redness that's seen after inflammatory acne and to also present treatment options. So if you look closely, this patient has these red dots all over her face, and this is the marks of old acne. And she didn't like it because when she felt that people looked at her, it looked as though she had active acne. And so we treated her multiple times with pulse dye laser and we were able to clear it. Post-inflammatory erythema can also occur off the face, actually anywhere where you have inflammation. This patient had acne on her arms and she was so self-conscious about it. She would not wear any dresses that were sleeveless. She's an avid athlete. She wouldn't wear short sleeves to the gym because she was so self-conscious. And if you look closely, this photo is a little bit blurry, but she has brown and red. And so for the brown, we targeted that with clear and brilliant laser. And for the red, we used pulse dye laser. And so we treated her multiple times at monthly intervals. And you can see that we really cleared up the discoloration. We treat other dermatoses as well. This is a patient with something called tuberous sclerosis. And with this diagnosis, you can have these little bumps called uh, angiofibromas. So Dr. Geronimus and I treated this patient 
combining treatments. So we use the fractal CO2, pulse dye laser, as well as electrocautery to uh, target these little bumps. And we were really um, excited because we got the cover of one of our journals based on our work. We also have stretch marks that can show to be red in color. This patient had stretch marks here in her armpit and you can see some improvement. And I know this is a confusing photo because there's this you know, dark stuff in her armpit. Um, and I'll explain that to you in a second. She actually came to see me for two different problems. One, the stretch marks and two for hyperhidrosis, which means excessive sweating, especially in the armpit. So we were able to treat her with pulse dye laser to address the red stretch marks. And I treated her hyperhidrosis with something called Miradry. And this um, device targets the sweat glands. And before I treat our patients, I perform a sweat test to see where they're sweating and how much they're sweating. And you can see that she's dripping sweat, literally, when I took this picture. And so this is before her first treatment. And this is after her second treatment, you can see the significant improvement in the amount of sweating. And we know this because we helped uh, conduct the clinical trials that led to the FDA approval. And we know that two treatments are needed about three months apart. But if you go back to the stretch marks, you can see the redness has also improved as we staggered her treatments using pulse dye laser here as well. So when we talk about red stretch marks, patients also ask, do you, do you treat white stretch marks? And we do. This is the inner thigh of one of my patients you can see here. And if you focus on these moles that she has, you can see that she has these squiggly lines. They almost look like scars. And after a few treatments, they get better. And you can see here, they're almost gone. And this one, we, this patient we treated using the picosecond laser and she had great results. We also treat venous lakes. And you can see these are just dilated venules. So they're part of uh, vasculature and they look like little blueberries on the lips. And this patient hated these and didn't even realize there were treatment options available. And so we treated him one time and you can see that there's still a faint mark of them. And so we treated him one more time and you can see that they're essentially gone. I also wanna show you another patient. She had the same thing, but she underwent a surgical excision from another facility and she came to see us and wanted um, help with the treatment of her, of her venous lakes. And so this is before treatment and here you can see it's a little bit better with one treatment and is essentially gone with the second treatment. We also treat scars. This patient unfortunately um, had skin grafts taken from her legs and you can see the improvement using pulse dye laser on both of her legs. And she did have multiple monthly treatments. I actually spoke to her a few weeks ago and she's very happy with her results. She says she can't even see her scars because we know the pulse dye laser also helps with some of the texture as well. As Risa mentioned, I'm also a Mohs micrographic surgeon, so I treat skin cancers. This patient had a skin cancer on her nose, and there are multiple ways to reconstruct this surgical defect. Um, but we discussed all the treatment options, and the patient wanted to minimize any potential midline distortion, so we opted for a skin graft. And you can see this is afterwards. You can see she had some discoloration or vasculature there, and there's a little bit of a textural issue. So what I did is I treated her with the CO2 laser and combined it with pulse dye laser to improve the appearance of her scar. We also see scars from outside um, offices that come, uh, patients from outside facilities that come and seek help for the scars that they've developed. We actually wrote a case series, Dr. Dronis and I, because we were seeing a lot of patients with perioral scarring. This patient had CO2 laser done um, by somebody else and she had this contracture around her mouth. She couldn't fully open her mouth. So we combined multiple lasers, picosecond laser, pulse dye laser and injections to improve the appearance of her scar. And you can see this is the after picture improvement of her scar. But what was most notable about this patient was that she could finally fully open her mouth. We also treat bruising. As you can see, this patient had a lower blepharoplasty, which is just a laser for, I'm sorry, which is um, surgery to improve her lower eyelids. And we treated her with pulse dye laser and we were able to minimize the bruising that she um, had after surgery. So a lot of our plastic surgeon colleagues send us patients, especially after neck lifts and facelifts to help their patients recover faster. We also treat our own bruises that we incurred. So this is my patient. She came in to see us for cellulite 
and I treated her on the backside and you can see she had some bruising that we were able to clear up. And this is just a little warning slide because I'm sure I'll get questions about what this procedure is. So I'm um, providing a few before and afters, but it does show the backside. So if there are any children watching, this is the time to maybe move the computer camera. So this patient had a little bit of cellulite on her buttock and we were able to soften it using subcision, using a device called Selfina. And you can see here a little bit of dimpling that we were able to soften. And I would say we could also add some soft tissue fillers or Sculptra to further improve her results. But this was actually done for the company to show that the device actually worked. So this is before and after. I also treat my patients with Botox and fillers and afterwards some of them may tend to bruise and to prevent bruising, I also use lasers to mitigate that risk. So this patient came in for some rejuvenation. You can see some volume loss here, accentuation of her nasolabial folds and you can see her jowls here. So we use a little bit of soft tissue fillers and Botox to soften everything, improve the volume loss. And we also um, use a little bit of lasers to mitigate any bruising. We also treat port wine stains. Dr. Geronimus and I, um, along with our other colleagues, published a paper using a combination of radio frequency and pulse dye laser in combination. And we were able to show that this combination in this sequence improved port wine stains when compared to all the other options. Radio frequency alone, pulse dye laser alone, pulse dye laser first followed by radio frequency versus uh, doing nothing. And you can see here, the patient has a little bit of a scar. That's from a biopsy we took so we could evaluate what was happening on the cellular level. And so here are some more before and afters, before and afters. Dr. Geronimus and I also treated patients with darker skin types who had port wine stains and we actually published our results. This patient was treated at three months and you can see her skin is much lighter here versus when she's a little bit older and we were able to completely clear her port wine stain. And this is really important to us because we do have so many lasers and modalities and we always try to innovate and include, be inclusive to include a lot of our different patients with different skin types. So in summary, we reviewed leg veins, varicose veins, reticular veins, and spider veins, as well as unwanted vasculature on the face and other areas. So I wanna thank you for your attention and I'll take some questions. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Bay. That was lovely. Um, we have lots of questions that have come in. And if anyone else would like to submit, you can use the Q&A feature on the bottom of Zoom. If you're watching this live on Facebook, um, I can try and monitor those as well. But if you can come into Zoom, that would be great. Otherwise, um, Dr. Bay's uh, phone number, the website, and her Instagram handle are currently on the screen if you want to take a screenshot because we will take this down shortly. All right, so we have time for a few questions. Um, here's the first one. This one, this person got theirs in right away, so they were ready from the beginning. Do compression stockings really work if you stand and walk a lot during the day, for example, at work? Uh, but what is it for? Does it work for what? To prevent or to treat? Because it does help to prevent, but if you have a genetic predisposition for developing varicose veins, it may not be that helpful. But I do, um, I can tell you that compression stockings do help with symptoms. So if you can notice when you, you know, put them on and take them off, you may feel the difference. Your legs may be less sore if you're wearing them versus when you're not wearing them. So they help with symptoms, but they're not a treatment per se, but they do help prevent to a certain extent. Okay, here's another good one from Denise. I have done vein injections several times, but it never worked well and the veins always come back. Um, what are your thoughts? So it depends. So a lot of times patients will have one treatment and of course it doesn't work because you need multiple monthly treatments. And it really depends on the severity of your veins as well. But we are a living person, so we're going to develop new vessels. So you may need maintenance therapy once all the veins are cleared. Got it. All right. I had sclerotherapy, but still have a few very small red and purple spider veins. What's the best treatment to deal with these? Is it laser? And if so, what kind of laser and how many treatments might it take? So it depends. I think what you're describing is something called matted telangiectasias, which can be difficult to treat. 
Um, but I would have to see you to really tell you what the best option is. Um, sometimes we use different medicines when we inject to specifically target those metatelangiectasias. Lasers don't work that well, but sometimes depending on the size or the appearance of it, we can use lasers. Got it, okay. While we're doing this, um, we have Rebecca said, hi, I hope you're well, Dr. Bay. Thank you for treating my spider wings years ago. I'm still very happy with the results. Thanks, that's awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you need multiple treatments based on how many veins you have to treat? I think it depends, like the density as well as the size of the vein. So it's like multifactorial. There's no like easy answer to that because everyone is different. So we tailor your treatment based on what you present with. Okay. This one's from Anonymous. Um, I know you're a dermatologist with a lot of experience, so I wanted to know, is there any downtime needed after vein treatments? I'm asking specifically since it's summertime, like with laser, do I need to be a vampire after these treatments? Yes, so I'm glad you asked that. So I reviewed that over uh, my slides that, um, you know, we don't want our patients to fly two weeks after treatment because there's a very, very small theoretical risk of a blood clot. So um, there's that issue. And then because we're creating inflammation and I reviewed post-inflammatory erythema, that can also happen in the treated area. So wherever you were treated, you can have redness. And if you're sun exposed, it can turn brown. So we want you to be out of the sun. So it is a seasonal thing. Um, what happens mostly during the summers is that patients come in for an evaluation. And then if they qualify for a duplex ultrasound, we perform that. And then we write a letter to your insurance and it takes about three months, depending on your insurance, to get it covered. And so during that time, it's now um, fall, the perfect time to treat. So a lot of times patients come during the summer to get evaluated so that we can be set for the fall for treatment. Perfect. And just to make sure you all are aware, we um, are open right now. Dr. Bay is available for consultations and seeing patients as are all of our board certified dermatologists and plastic surgeons. Um, okay, here's one about the, um, from Rebecca. I'm curious about the sweating armpit procedure. What is it called and does it help with VO issues? So it's called mirror dry and it can help because we're eliminating the sweat glands and the other glands that can cause odor. So a lot of my patients have commented that they've noticed both. So yeah. Okay. Um, Let's see, Monica says, does crossing your legs when you sit affect the leg, your veins in a negative way? I think if you're predisposed to developing veins, then it could, but um, I don't know if there's any scientific report or data about that. Okay. Um, let's see, I had red spider veins on my face removed by Dr. Geronimus by laser. Why wouldn't you use the same for leg veins instead of the injections? I totally agree. And it would be so much easier um, if we could do that. We've actually studied using lasers for spider veins in various vessels. And what we see is that it recurs. And it could also be due to a pressure issue because there's so much pressure in our legs versus something like our face. Um, but it's a good point. We've studied it and sclerotherapy is still the gold standard because it works the best. Okay, here's another question that I think a lot of people are probably curious about. In your veins, I'm uh, oh, sorry, in your legs, since the veins are killed, does it affect your blood circulation to the heart? So it actually makes it more efficient because if your valves aren't working, the blood isn't really going back to your heart efficiently. And in the superficial venous system, you only have about 5% of your total body blood volume. So it's nothing dangerous or um, anything you need to be concerned about. It's more of a nuisance because it doesn't help the circulation. Um, a lot of the times insurance companies do want to cover it because if you have a chronic wound, it may not heal well because the, the veins aren't efficient. So um, yeah, that's a great question. And that's, I guess, my answer. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all right, I have a vein on the side of my forehead, runs from my hairline down to my eye, and sometimes it looks so blue and sometimes it's obvious. Other times I don't see it at all. Um, can you tell me about this and if that's something you can treat? Yes, it's something we can treat. Um, sometimes with pressure, it can uh, become more visible. 
if you're laying down and then standing up, it can be more visible. So it can be positional. But yes, those are called uh, periorbital veins, like the picture that I showed. And we can absolutely treat that. But again, it depends on the exact location. So it'd be better to be evaluated in person. Perfect. All right, we have time for just a few more questions. Um, for multiple varicose veins, do you recommend multiple sclerotherapy sessions or a one-time EVL? So it depends. Um, not to get too technical, we have to have the vein pretty straight to be able to cannulate the laser fiber. So we would have to evaluate you first to really give you a good answer. Okay. So I think this is in reference to one of the before and afters you showed. It said, what product was used to fill the soft tissue on the jawline? Oh, uh, I actually use Juvederm Ultra Plus. Okay, great. Um, if I have sizable varicose veins in my legs removed, should I be concerned about blood clots forming? If you have them removed or if you have them? If you have them removed. No. Immediately after the procedure, if you're flying, um, yes, there's a small risk, but having them in general, there's actually a study that shows like one to two people out of 100 on a plane actually have small blood clots that they don't even know about. So um, having varicose veins is actually a risk factor. Got it. Okay, and I think this is a good one to end with. Um, I heard you say four to six treatments of sclerotherapy are needed, but how far spaced apart are they and when can I start to see results? So I would say four to six treatments, sometimes less, sometimes more at monthly intervals. And you can see results immediately, but what you'll first notice is that we injure the vessels and so they'll be pink. So they can look worse than what you started with but that's just the process of it. So it can take a few months to really see results, especially for spider veins. Got it. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bay, for your time. I hope you all found this as educational and informative as I did. If you have any additional questions, you're welcome to send Dr. Bay a direct message on her Instagram handle. Um, you are welcome. Oh, let me take that down so we can see you. You are welcome to call the office or visit our website. And Dr. Bay is available for consultations as are all of our physicians at our center. So any final words, Dr. Bay? I just want to say thank you and everybody please stay safe, wear a mask and that's it. Thank you. Great, thanks so much for your time. Um, and we hope to see some of you in the office soon and have a great rest of your evening. Thanks, Dr. Bay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.